Well, hello, every, everyone. Um, I'm your friend in neighborhood, Carla Bad, and this is the Fellowship League. This is our fourth, uh, sorry, this is our third special uh, question and answer session. And uh, I have a wrap for Mr. Judah right here, who is our guest uh, for this day. Hey, how are you, my, my friend? How are you, bro? My friend and my brother, I am uh, splendid as it can get. I have a rap. Splendid. Oh, you have a rap for me? Yeah, I have a rap for you, man. It goes like this. It. it goes like this. Tick tock, time to rock. It rhymes like a spot. It is time to be back in this Zoom chat for the glory of God. Come on, people. Come on, man. You like that if rap, I bro? A, if, I, if I had a record label, bro, you'd be my top artist. Oh, I'd man. Have you touring. Oh, um, man. I would have to take everybody else off the stage and say, guys, it's, <laughs> it's time for Carl to, MC Carl Abad, to, to give you a, a good tune. Come on, people. Come on, man. Oh, come on. Well, so are, are we beginning? Is this it? This is it. Yes. We're live. And we are live right now. We are, we are recording right uh, now, brother. You are, you are quick to the draw. You're just like, boom. I just get on and it's like recording already. Yes. You call that spontaneous extrapolation of your Whoa. speech extraction. Come on, man. <laughs> I like your shirt. Oh, thanks. Elevate. It's just, mm. um, it's just reversed. <laughs> Reverse Elevate, over right here. Elevate, guys. Youth organization there under Vice CCF. Please come. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. What's well, going on, brother? Yeah, man. Uh, the reason why so, uh, this is this is like your own show. This is like, <laughs> is this going to be signed by a major network soon, bro? I mean, this is it. It's the beginning. Oh yes, man. Uh, actually, it's it was just like a. Uh, Practically, practically, practically almost two week, two weeks. We've been doing this for mm -hmm. since uh, Thursday of uh, last last week, and uh, uh, we're just actually starting off. We have we have mm -hmm. invited we have invited already two um, guests, and uh, but that was last week. So we had a different focus last week. We focused more on Christianity okay. and its, and its impact to humanity. So one mm -hmm. guest we we talked about uh, Christianity and culture. And the other guests, we mm. talked about Christianity, philosophy, and life. So this wow. week, this week we're gonna start this week with some like a testimony, so that um, mm. at least there would be like a, a balance between the head and the heart. Come on, Ravi, mm. Ravi, right there, man. <laughs> Logical consistency, empirical adequacy, and experiential relevance. relevance. So we will oh, yeah. we will talk about the experiential relevance. That's yes, right. right there, one of the one through three four five grid system of Ravi there. Wow. Come on. Come on, people. Well, uh, the reason why I invited you here, Sir Judah, is because I, I watched your previous um, um, like interview with the, with the Cup of Faith, uh, if, if I'm right. Mm, with yes. Daniel and Tarni, yes. yes. Daniel and Tarni, yes. And um, I was amazed by uh, how you exchanged there and how you shared your life. So I was thinking, since we have our own page and then we have our own empire, Maybe you could join us. I, I love your just kind of speaking into it. Like it's gonna be an enter. It's not. It's an empire enterprise and all that. Oh yeah, yeah I like it. I'm so, proud of you, brother. Oh man, I'm. The more I am really proud of what you're gonna share to us right now, man. Because um, I'm so blessed by your life. And by the way, for the sake of the viewers, uh, brother Judah right here is one of my mentors in apologetics, particularly. Oh, man. In I I apologize. Oh yes, we all apologize. And uh, Ravi here is an RZIM associate, if I'm right. You are an RZIM associate. Yes, I'm an associate for the Asia Pacific team. And um, it's been an incredible privilege and honor to be part of that um, family. I would say family. Um, yes. and, and beautiful, it, beautiful people with beautiful feet. As they say, beautiful are the feet of those who have the good news of Jesus Christ. So. Amen. They have, nice, they, they have uh, beautiful pedicures. <laughs> awesome. It's not just the pedigree and degree, but the pedicure. Beautiful yeah. feet. Anyway. Spontaneous there, bro. So That's when you know you're part of like RZIM because you got to do that. You know, you know. You know, you know, yes. By the way, moreover, uh, 
yeah. besides that, I used to uh, I I was I became part of the training program of RZM Asia Pacific back in Singapore. Yes. Uh, thanks to Sir Jude. Emerging Jupiter. the yeah. emerging apologist. So our brother is not just elevating, but he's emerging. Oh man! Oh, I, I like that, bro. I feel so flattered there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, so. yeah, I love oh. you, bro. You uh, truly and fully display the joy of the Lord. Amen there, bro. Well, that's the only purpose we are, why we are doing this, right? Amen. Mm. <laughs> right. So, uh, are you ready to share a testimony? Uh, shall we start? I mean, just how are we going to do this? Am I just going to, you know, begin from when my mom and my dad uh, <laughs> met and uh, had their first date? I mean, how far do you want to go back? Well, uh, the good news there is it's uh, for the sake of organization. We have prepared uh, questions. Yeah, you got some questions. Yeah, yeah we got some questions there. So uh, we'll start first with the first question. Of course, we should take care. We should be focused more. Uh, we should uh, be careful with the trail there. So we will not be too um, like mixed up with the timeline and events. So uh, the first question is, um, how did you live your life before you knew Christ? So... You know, I've heard that you used to be, uh, come on, man, and, and you used to be, uh, right? You used to be Pac-Man in the past, if I'm right, and you Whoa. used to be, you used to be like this, this gangster <clears throat> stuff, right? So uh, you want the long version or the short version? Well, it's it's up to you, bro. <laughs> the short version is I once was lost and now I'm found. Amen. Whoa. Done. Next question. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, you know, Carl, and to everyone who else is viewing, all the millions of people who are viewing and tuning in right now, um, you, you know, my life before Christ has um, different streams of identity, you know, meaning I wore a lot of different hats back then. Um, of course, we know the big category of just being lost and being in the dark and being unaware of the life I was meant to live in and through him. I... Um, you know, I came to the Philippines um, in 1998 to pursue what would be then and still today, since we've never received it or attained it. But I wanted to be the first gold medalist for the Olympic boxing team. So I was a boxer. Um, that was my primary um, identity at that moment in life. I wanted to be the greatest fighter of all time. Uh, I'm only a few weeks younger than actually Pacquiao. Uh, so, you know, I actually saw him and trained with him before he was an international star um, back in uh, Mandaluyong and Abulos' gym. And so I saw him actually rise up. But that's another story. But, you know, I was with the national pool uh, boxing with ABBA, uh, the Amateur Boxing Association for the Philippines, from 1999 to 2002. <clears throat> so I, I, you know, I competed here, go for gold, the national opens and all that. Um, but for some odd reason, and, and now looking back, I know that God had spared me from uh, pursuing that um, so that in turn I would be able to spare what else or what would be left of my intellectual faculty. And here's the interesting thing, you know, uh, brother, um, when I connect the dots and, you know, when I tell a story, I'm like one of those filmmakers where you're like, is it 1979? Is it 1984? Is it 1884? Where is he going with this? And at the end, he connects the dot like a, like like a uh, grand weeper okay so oh. but anyway so come on. Um, come on so like okay so i wanted to be a boxer it never really happened but even after that season of my life i became i actually looked for work and i became an entertainer i got into show business but even throughout this like journey as a an artist and showbiz show business i was still trying to get into the olympics so 2004 2000 2008 and 2012. In 2012 was my last run. Believe it or not, I, I trained. I had um, Toby's Arena or Toby Sports backing me up and sponsoring me with my gear and all that. I had financial support uh, to pursue um, that hopeful, you know, that first gold medal. And I remember the last sparring session that I had um, where I literally threw my hardest punch ever, you know, oh. and my shoulder just exploded. Um, it was a, uh, my shoulder dislocated, not from me being punched, but me rather inflicting the attack. Um, I fell down to my knees and I kid you not, um, I actually got really upset. Okay. But then immediately brother, like the spirit of God in me just reminded me, 
your will be done. Okay. And here's the crazy thing. After that, and, and this is 2012, March, I was walking out uh, of the, the national team uh, training facility in Rizal and coach Pat Legaspi, who was the head coach, okay, of the national team then said to me, okay lang yan, Judah. At least kaya mo pa mag -isip. And I'm like, what? Out of all the things that he said, and not to say that boxers don't think, but the fact that God spared me and who would have thought, and you connect the dots, I would be working with an organization whose motto is to help the believers think and the thinkers believe. God spared me from getting too deep in, or too far into the deep end of things where I would have lost all my capacity to, to think clearly. I tell you right now, you asked me what I was before coming to Christ, uh, Carl. I was the person, and just so we could have a theme for this talk, for this interview, I wasn't a thinker. I was a person who just ran after his desires, fleshly desires. So I wanted everything about, everything I did and said and pursued was all about me. I was, you know, lost in myself. Uh, that's why they say uh, sin is about the self curving in on itself. I think it was Martin Luther that said that. That's basically what it is. It's just selfishness. It's autonomy. It's me without law, me without God washing over my back and me being God. Uh, prior to coming to Christ, I thought I was Jesus. That's another part of my testimony where I, were, I thought I was a spiritual avatar. Prior to being J-U-D-A-H, which means to live in praise of Judah, which is my baptized name, I had a different name. I was J-U-D-D-H-A, which is J for Jesus and U-D-D-H-A for Buddha. And I thought I was going to bring, you know, the best of the East, the best of the worst, uh, or the best of the East and the best of the West, sorry, best of the East and the best of the West, and bring that together and come out with my own concoction, my own uh, recipe for freedom, because I came from so much brokenness, and I wanted to be, I had a messianic complex, I wanted to see people set free. I was all about freedom, but freedom on my own terms. So, so my testimony is quite the... Uh, it's colorful in a sense, like it's a lot, it's a, it's a huge palette with different colors. I was a boxer. I was uh, a Hindu practitioner. I thought I was a spiritual avatar. I was in show business. So a lot of the fame got, you know, there was a lot of, you know, fame gets to you, man. Uh, you know, being able to have all these privileges, um, you know, there's a lot of temptations. It, every, sin was so accessible and uh, that's why when and when I uh, when I turned 30, which is interesting, brother, um, getting into my 30s meant that I was going into the so-called Christ years. Um, and from what I used to believe, these were my like Christ consciousness years. So I wanted to know more about Jesus. So you know what I did? I approached um, a pastor, and I I told him I asked him to disciple me. Wow! And you know what? I read the Bible. He uh, with him, he shared with me the gospel and walked me through the gospels, man. He walked, uh, he walked, he walked me through the passion of Christ to that moment, moment when Jesus says, Tetelestai, it is finished. And I realized what he has done. But it was this one moment in my life, bro, that I was um, reading the book of Colossians. The book of Colossians. And when I read the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, and I'll read it for you guys, for you, brother. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank it you. says, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy or empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity, deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. You know, when that when those words of Paul met me at that one moment in my life, and I know I still remember where I was and that moment that, that hit me, it was as if there was a time capsule in that moment or that, that, that those, uh, those verses and it was sent directly to me, bro. And it spoke to me and it just silenced and sliced me in half, bro. Like it, it literally was the living word of God and it penetrated me. Uh, splitting, you know, bone and marrow, brother. And um, I realized at that moment that Jesus is exactly who he claimed to be, the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Amen, brother. Well, imagine you, 
being uh, a little bit coming from the mystical background and then being a Hindu mm-hmm. practitioner and and from uh from, <laughs> from this really pleasurable life god has transformed you through that verse in colossians and wow it mm-hmm. it really it really brought you to humility and it really it, it, it transformed your life so um how, how did uh how did Christ transform your life from there, from the inside out? As uh, as you uh, as you gave your life to Christ, I mean, you surrendered your life to Christ. Was it was it like abrupt? Was it immediately? Um, suddenly, blessings come, or have you reached the lowest point of your life somewhere where you lost everything? Um, what happened um, since you gave your yeah. life to Christ? In two thousand nine, um, when I came to Christ. When, he, when I finally heard his call and his fullness and beauty. Uh, that was also the same year that I met Earl, my wife, and we got engaged after three days. That's another story. And then we got married in Cana, Galilee, which is another story on another episode. Um, but, um, you know, in 2009, I prayed the prayer that changed my life, and I remember it verbatimly. And I said, Lord, take away the things in my life that got in the way of my relationship with you. And one, one, one by one, uh, Carl, um, my contract with ABS-CBN, um, my contacts, he literally lost my phone and, you know, wasn't able to connect with all the people who used to connect with me to, you know, to, because I used to MC. I think I had, I had three TV shows at one time. Um, you know, I was a DJ, I had a morning show, I had other guestings. Um, so my, my, it was, a, I mean, the show business was like, it was packed. It was quite dense with activity. And when I had prayed that, all of a sudden, it was just like, you know, the exposure was getting further and further away from me. And all of a sudden, I'm like, what am I going to do now with my life? So from 2009 to 2012, it was three years, like Paul in this uh, Arabian years, where you're like, what happened to Paul? You know, what was he doing in the desert? That was my wilderness. And I literally was taught uh, by God to, um, to pray, you know, Lord, provide for me my daily bread and we literally were we were we were just living it out like we didn't know what was going to happen next and it was in 2012 that I prayed and I literally had a, a moment where I believe God had spoke had spoken to me in ways that I could understand I won't get into detail here because I don't want to be branded as crazy or anything <laughs> but don't worry it's grounded on the word to all you reform people out there um, I'm, a, I'm, all oh, about so, I'm all about the soulless people. I'm not talking about iced tea. I'm talking about the soulless. Oh, for supposition. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I think God has a way of really uh, meeting us where we're at. And God revealed to me, uh, I guess, my, my calling at that time to be an evangelist, you know. And I knew I had a Saul to call answering. I had a Saul, was it Saul to Paul answering the call uh, oh. moment where I knew that I was just like going that. to... I was just going to serve God with all of who I am because prior to that I was already an evangelist, but it was an evangelism. It was evangelism for my own, for my own namesake. You know, like I said, I was Jesus and Buddha, you know? So, um, yeah. So all of that, you know, I've had, that's why I look back at my life where I'm really grateful, you know, because the fact that I'm still alive, I lost a lot of friends along the way as in lost them. Like literally they, they, they passed away, they were killed and I'm still alive and I'm still able to enjoy this day by the Lord's grace and mercy, of course. Praise God, sir. Uh, um, I've heard from you that you, that, um, you became involved with RZIM as uh, one of, uh, how did, how did RZIM impact your life? How did you know Ravi? What was so wow. special? What was so special? <clears throat> what was so special about that organization? Just to perhaps answer the question, maybe that was the organization that helped you, that helped you become more convinced yeah. that, Je- that, that Jesus Christ is the truth in your journey in life. Um, mm. It's okay if you share what made you so convinced via this, this organization, RZIM. It's interesting. You know, Carl, it's an interesting moment that you're asking <laughs> me this question. Yeah. It's an interesting moment that we're having this recording now, yeah. bro, because, and I'm looking out my window. Wow. Into the distance, into the distance. Wow. And... I'm Amazing. I was on a phone call earlier, but um, around three o'clock and I was with Michael Ramsden and the Asian Pacific team. And um, my, and I share this like with just my soul. 
I've been, I've been, I've been quite numb and taken. I've been taken. I, I took a, 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 I'll say a violent hit, but a, it's, it's a tremendous hit over the weekend when I found out that um, my dear mentor, from digital mentor to being a life, a life mentor, um, not just with apologetics, but just with life in general. Um, you know that this might be his last week of of living on this earth. And, um, you know, Dr. Ravi Zacharias is not just a man of wisdom, though he is. He's not just a man of great intellect, though he is. He's not just a man with great quips and whips, though he is. Um, he's a humble man, a broken man, who, who knows that it's only by the, sh the sheer grace and mercy of God that he was given a life well lived. Uh, he ran a good race. Still, even to this moment, I, uh, Michael Ramsden just shared that uh, when he left the hospital in um, Houston to, uh, to be taken to Atlanta uh, last week, that he shared his testimony and prayed with the doctors and the nurses there. That even to his last, um, you know, the last moments, he's still sharing the gospel. So if, um, my journey with Dr. Ravi um, began literally on day one for me as a Christian. Um, prior to becoming a Christian, I was in pursuit of knowledge, knowledge of freedom from all sorts of different um, broken cisterns. And uh, I didn't know where the deep well of li living water was until I read the, the scriptures for what it was. Um, so I burned up and gave up a lot of books. I just said, I, I'm done with this, I wanna start again. So I literally burned about 650 plus books, oh. brother on religions, ideologies, philosophies, but I just got rid of it all. I said, I don't want it. And I burned it in the middle of this road in Payatas. That's another story. <laughs> but I just said, I just, basically I'm saying, I'm burning the, the, my past, I want to begin again. And the very first book that I bought as a Christian was The Grand Weaver by Dr. Ravi Zacharias. Now, what are the odds of that? There are no odds. It's a perfect design by the, the mind of God in his perfection. And um, I started listening to his podcast. I would even listen to it, like washing the dishes and my wife at that's like, what are you listening to? I'm like, oh, this guy, Dr. Dr. Ravi. No. And then he, she started listening to it. And honestly, I would listen to Dr. Ravi going to sleep. Not to say he puts me to sleep. That's another story. But I, I would, it would literally, I would, it was like, it was, uh, it, was a, it was sweet to my soul listening to him speak because I love, I love language. I love the power of words. And uh, Dr. Ravi has a, you know, a literary degree in uh, romant, uh, romantic literature. And so he knows, he loves words. And um, so I love the way that he uses words because it's not just about us presenting the truth uh, clearly, but also to share it uh, beautifully. And the way that Dr. Ravi does it, the way he weaves it uh, with analogy, illustration, story. I mean, it's just, he's a master, a master uh, storyteller. So I loved it. Um, and then from that day on, I, um, I just got entrenched into apologetics. Um, in 2012, uh, when I broke out of that, those uh, Arabian years, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I was blessed to jumpstart a... Um, a company called Lead Out Coaching and Consultancy with my wife and our partner. And we started doing trainings for companies. And mm -hmm. I, we would do a three day course uh, seminar. And on the third day, I would come and present the gospel. I was the, I played the pastoral evangelist role on the third wow. day. So, and uh, that jump started my, my ministry, you know, as a corporate uh, business consultant. Uh, but in that role, I knew that I was, I wanted to preached the full throttle gospel in my life. And I went to go full time. And I, uh, prior to being where I'm at now, situated at CCF, at CCF Center in Pasig, I, um, I was with a different uh, church ministry and organization uh, in uh, Every Nation, um, mm. in BGC. I was with Victory. And um, here's the crazy thing. Um, I was um, discipled. I was mentored by Pastor Paolo Punsalan, who honestly, I love him with all my heart. And he's a wonderful guy, a mentor. And um, when I had an opportunity um, to serve at CCF, this is a crazy thing. Um, and I think it's the wisest thing that he said 
ever. I mean, the wisest words that I ever heard from anybody. He said, it's not about you staying at victory and it's not about you going to CCF. It's about where God is taking you. And I said, so, and then after he said that, I said, you know, one of the, also the reasons I wanted to uh, also help serve at uh, CCF um, after I had received a, um, an invitation to serve there, because um, I knew that they, they would have, or maybe having a, or maybe having a, um, a partnership in the long run with RZIM. So I honestly thought, I was just like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I'll be pretty in close proximity to people with RZIM and maybe get material and maybe study alongside them, not knowing that one day I would meet a man named Hayden Co who then would invite me to MC his birthday party, who would then have Dr. Ravi as the keynote speaker alongside with Stephen Baldwin. Oh, and Stephen Baldwin. That, yeah, and then 23rd, and this was 2014 in May, and I MC that event, and it was like, I was just cracking jokes, <laughs> MCing, you know, you know, making, I wasn't making fun of Dr. Ravi, but I had some good jokes, you know, and, and we just got along, and I, I guess he appreciated my jokes, and then for some odd reason, Dr. Ravi, alongside with the different um, members of the team, they've had the same sense and um, I guess idea of, of maybe having me tag along with them to on this journey of apologetics. And then one week later, I, I met up with Dr. Ravi at uh, Hayden Coe's house. And he, he said he had this um, idea. Of course, it's a big good idea. So you know, providing for me um, an academic track so that I can be raised up as an evangelist for Asia who is undergirded by, with apologetics. Because apologetics is not apologetics without evangelism. It's evangelism at the forefront, right? And as Dr. Ivy said, it's just the seasoning. So mm. our message is Jesus Christ. It's not terminologies and categories. And, and it's about Jesus Christ, the person, you know, and the personhood and the deity of who Jesus Christ is. So that's our message. It's, it's a person. Not, it's not just about propositions. So um, that began my journey of pursuing an undergrad uh, through London School of Theology. I'm doing a, a BA in theology. And God willing, when I'm done with this, Carl, I'll pursue uh, an MTH, uh, maybe in apologetics. Um, I'm, I'm still taking it one day at a time. Most likely it'll be there. But, but Dr. Ravi uh, also told me to um, consider doing a minor in um, philosophy. So oh. we'll see, man. We'll just take it one day at a time. Like right now, this moment, um, you know, with what's happening with Dr. Ravi right now. And yes. like just the apologetic and evangelistic and even the whole Christian world is kind of like just lamenting over this for sure, um, yeah for sure the whole yeah. world will the whole world will really especially the christian church who is really in touch with ravi will, will mourn yeah in that time comes. you know brother what the one thing i could share about dr ravi is um he was a he was genuine you know um when he listens to you um i mean when he talks to you he listens he actually listens to you man and he's not trying to rush past that to the next meeting he really makes you feel loved. And uh, that's what I love about him. He was just a real guy, you know. Wow, Sir Judah, uh, since the time you became, well, I hope to see you in Oka. <laughs> well, I, I hope, that'd be amazing, man, because I, I hope to see you there. You know, oh, I man. hope to see you, Carl. Let's see. I think, Carl, uh, <laughs> if I could impart to you some kind of like just, lesson of my life and to everyone who's watching um i don't know who's going to be watching if, if, if this is going to draw christians or non-christians or people who are just trying to figure things out still if i was going to teach you one thing about my life lesson i remember i came to christ at the age of 30 and i can tell you i wasn't thinking prior to becoming a christian god had to illuminate me and lift the veil from my mind so i could see reality as it is through the eyes of Christ, through the eyes of God. Um, if I could just share one thing, it's this, do not waste your time. Do not waste your time. Now I could say, don't waste your life, but John Piper already beat me to it. Another <laughs> JP. I'm another JP. So just JP is saying, don't waste your time because time is valuable. 
Um, and there's so many things buying, so many things in life right now that is buying for our attention. And once it grabs your attention, man, it's going to steal away your time. And if, and if it steals your time, it's going to steal away your opportunity to invest or to exercise um, your calling. Okay. So invest in your calling, exercise your calling. You know, it's either you're on the backstage of your calling or at the front stage of your calling, but make sure that you have a, and this is a new one that came to me this week, an, an intense singularity about your calling. Get the debris out of the way and just be focused on honoring God with your life. You know, I mean, what is the end, the chief end of man? To glorify God and enjoy him forever. Keep God at the center of all things and just focus. I mean, it's not, like I said, life is precious. Every moment counts. So don't waste it. Well, bro, I mean, one, ex yeah. one extra scroll on Instagram, one extra, one extra <laughs> on, on Facebook. It's yeah. just, it's eating up time. And it's just, you know, for the sake of entertainment. I mean, uh, I think, I think the, the church is losing because of entertainment. You know, we got to stop entertaining ourselves and start um, feeding our souls. So, you know, uh, I think a lot, some pastors have said it already in the last few weeks being in this quarantine, like, don't waste this quarantine. Get your life in order. That's why, folks, you like, follow, and share our Facebook page because this has valuable content and we'll be coming up with more guests in the coming days, guys. Wow. Uh, I think this is the... Actually, what you said there was actually the final question. What is the greatest lesson you have learned from your journey from... From uh, not knowing Christ to knowing Christ, but one last thing, sir, I want to um, sure I want to ask is uh, just in a nutshell, uh, what what really made you convinced that Jesus Christ is truth among all that you have listened to from spirit, New Age spirituality, mysticism, all of these things? What makes what make what made Jesus so unique? Mm -hmm. He's real. Oh. <laughs> He's just real, you know. He meets you where, where you're at. If you just get rid of the debris around, around him. You know, these doubts that you have about Jesus, they're okay. It's good to question Christianity. It's good to question truth because the truth will always explain itself to you clearly. So don't be afraid of it. Uh, you know, uh, go where the evidence uh, leads. And it always leads to the cross. And it leads to an empty tomb. And it leads to God with his arms wide open saying, come to all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. You know, um, Christ is not just um, the truth. He is not just the way, he is the life. And once you come to know who he is, all of who he is and all his truth, goodness and beauty, you're gonna come to realize that everything else pales in comparison to Jesus Christ on earth. And for all of eternity and that's why if i would leave you with this i'm going to leave you with god's word one of my favorite uh, locations in the bible is in first john chapter 5 and i'll just read to you verses yeah four and five of chapter five it says here for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. And who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God? You know, that's what I love about it. You know, Jesus didn't come here just to say, you know, follow these precepts and you'll be okay. He didn't try to mask um, reality um, from the pain and, and, and suffering that it's, it's filled with. No, he exposes it as it is, clearly, in its realness. But he says, look, I have overcome it. Just follow me. And that's what I love about it. It's just real. It's not fanciful, wishful thinking. It's, it's reality. We can't escape it. And... Um, you know, that's why I think my prayer for everyone who's watching and even for you, Carl, and at the end of it, our Christian walk, you know, it's not, it's not just true. It's not just good. It's not just beautiful. 
but it's real. It meets us where we're at. And it brings all things together for good. Amen, brother. That was that was inspiring, man. I hope to man. We respect your time. I know you're, you're you really have uh, you have kids. You have a uh, you have a family of your own. You have to take care of yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you're a busy guy. But uh, man, I really hope that we could see each other again. We could you would mentor us again. And uh, we hope that when st- one if Jesus will not come yet. If I'm not a pre-trip or post-trip guy, I, I'm not sure where am I. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah. I am a Christian. No? <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> I mean, if 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 the end is not yet uh, has not yet come, uh, hopefully mm-hmm. we can we can uh, continue. Um, yeah. The, the RZAM journey, and I hope. Yeah. You, you know, I think Carl, you're on a good you're on a good path. You're on a good track. Um, like I said, brother, uh, it might be a bit. Um, What's the word? Um, I don't want it to be a bit uh, cryptic. You know, you figure it out as you go, but I just don't waste your time. You know, don't waste time. And whatever is going to get in the way of your your calling and your devotion, uh, first and foremost, to God, get rid of it, fight it, just kill sin, you know. As uh, John Owens would say, kill sin in your life and live a life that is really worth, uh, worthy of his name. You know, it's, dude, you only have much time. And the thing about the time that we have, we don't know when it's up. You know, there's this one saying, live each day as if it's your last, because one day you'll be right. That's why you stay tuned, because this Thursday, Sir Judah will be speaking via webinar on why God would allow COVID. Come on, people. He'll be with Joe Philip, RZIM Asia Pacific. For all the, for, and my wife, and my wife, my wife will and, be there too. And his wife will be there, man. And for, my wife Earl. Uh, so for, if there's any any women who are watching right now, the Fellowship League, uh, my wife also. I'll promote my wife. Uh, she amen. and her team has a team a uh, team of female uh, apologists as well, and um, you know who um, provide cultural critique and commentary, but always bringing it back to the cross of Jesus Christ. Um, a woman's forum. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, look at that. Look for that uh, page on Facebook. And uh, for, one last thing I could ask, Carla, guys, keep praying for me. I'm not perfect. I need, I need all the grace and mercy that I can. And I know that with the little time I do have left, I don't know how long. It could be a day, a week, a year, a decade, you know, so, uh, half, I mean, half a decade. I, I don't know. But with the time I do have, pray for me. We all need to pray for each other because um, it's a war out there and we're called to be soldiers. And uh, we got to fight the good fight of faith. So pray for each other. Love on each other. And don't waste time watching things you, you ought not to. Well, do um, you have any closing? I think that, that's your closing remarks. Do you have anything to add there, Brother Judah? Uh, that's it, brother. I mean, uh, thank you for your time, bro. I mean, you know, you could invite, uh, you, could, you could have invited Michael Ramson, but you invited me. You could have well, invited uh, Joe Phillip, you know. Uh, but, uh, but, you can know, be, um, can be. This coming day, this coming weeks can be. Uh, I'll try to keep in touch with you, sir. Uh, I'll try to chat with you. I'm not, I'm not sure how can we keep in touch with them, but those are one of the great guys that we can keep in touch with for this, uh, for this cruciform message. So hopefully, um, through facts. Is that cru- cruciformed of uh, John John Dixon, right? Cruciform. Oh yeah, John Dixon. Well, you know one of those uh, authors, man. <laughs> I like, I like, I like that you're really into you're into literature as well. So once again, uh, yeah. our Facebook... Isn't that, is that what CCF stands for, bro? Cruciform? Oh! oh. Yeah, Come man. On, Come on, people. <laughs> Come on, man. So once there again, uh, please like, follow, and share our Facebook page, The Fellowship League. We focus more on facts, cross, and discourse. And uh, please, uh, like our page, continue to share because people need the gospel, people need the truth. And we thank uh, Brother Judah right here. With I really thank Brother Judah with all my heart here for being our brother, for being our friend, for joining us in this uh, Zoom meeting to share his testimony. And I, and I pray that uh, more and more viewers, if you guys are here watching us, hopefully you would reflect and start investigating the scriptures and start uh, learning more of who, really, who Jesus Christ is. If you want to join us this coming days, uh, just give us a chat and uh, pray for Sir Judah. And we hope to see yeah. you this will not be the last. This will be one of many more meetings we're going to do with Brother Judah right here. 
So uh, especially this coming Thursday, this be this be there the webinar with Joseph Philip and his wife, by God's grace on why God would allow COVID nineteen. So thank you guys for listening, Sir Judah. God bless you, brother. And uh, God bless you. Stay, remain being a rapper, bro. Rapper for God. Come on, bro. <laughs> A shift in the mind's paradigm towards paradise with words spoken in his name. So may we speak with truth in his truth alone. If the kingdom is within, then let us all recognize his throne. Lo and behold, a seed sown long ago had grown. For an ancient prophecy turned a stone within me into a heart of flesh. So, anyway. All right, brother. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a perfect hit there, right? <laughs> man, bro. Well. Just having no fun with my brother Carl. Come on. That's how we do it. <laughs> Yes, and I'm also having fun with you, you too, Brother Judah. Please um, update us and hope to keep in touch with you continuously in these coming days. God bless, Brother Judah. God bless you and your family. And adieu till next time. God bless, Brother. Oh, God bless you. God Fellowship bless. League. Did they have one of these? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know. Fellowship League. <laughs> I feel like you got you to gotta look this way. Like, <laughs> I don't know. All right, man. We'll keep it, right. keep, it, keep it going, man. Good stuff. Thank you, Sir Judah, and happy dinner. God bless. God bless. God bless.